I'm Tammy Jones, and I am the 2014 U.S. Amateur Champion. I'm Linda Wang, and I'm the 2017 U.S. Amateur Champion. My name is Dana Aft, and I am the 2013 U.S. Amateur Champion. My name is Kenneth Brisbane, and I am the 2014 U.S. Amateur Champion. Yes! Yes, baby! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the final of the women's division of this year's U.S. Amateur Championship, brought to you, of course, by the American Pool Players Association. I'm your host, Jason Bowman. I'm joined by the best in the biz, Double J, Jeremy Jones, here to call this finale. Jeremy, it's been a great couple days here at Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida, and we're about to put a nice big bow on it with what should be a great final match. Yeah, absolutely. I think you could definitely say the two deserving to be in the finals, and uh, two girls that know each other probably a little bit, both of them from Florida, uh, different coasts, but uh, I'm sure they, they know each other's game. And uh, we're going to see Julie Shearman and Jeannie Seaver tee it off here in the eight ball to start. A couple of Sunshine State girls here, a couple of rookies to the U.S. Amateur Championship as well. I know uh, Jeannie, a uh, pretty accomplished player on the amateur yeah, ranks. No I know rookie, you're familiar yeah. with her, but uh, her first time here at the U.S. Amateur Championship and Julia Sherman. Like Jeremy said, from Port St. Lucie, Florida, also a rookie. So, folks, we're going to have a new champion crown tonight. Uh, some history is going to go down here. A new name added to the championship trophy. To do it, they're going to have a race to nine. So we are in the single elimination phase of this event. Is a race to nine, combination of eight ball and nine ball, of course. In this particular finale, they're going to play six games of eight ball and up to 11 games of nine ball. As I mentioned, we have moved from the double elimination portion of the event to single elimination. And the winner of, not the lag, but the coin toss was able to choose the break or the format. I believe Jeannie won the coin toss, chose the break, and Julia has selected to start in the eight ball format. And so we are ready to go here from Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida. Oh, oh wow. First time we've seen that on the... Fireworks on the break. Yeah, Fired it right scratches. off the table. Yeah, the second <coughs> ball break, you got to be careful over hitting it because you, you know, the ball, the head ball's in the way, so you can't get a real full contact. So you're always going to have movement on the cue ball, and if you put a little too much into it, it can certainly get in the air. And I think, you know, we talked about different strategies on what game you pick or the break and all that, and I thought it was a pretty no-brainer for Julia after losing the toss and, and Jeannie taking the break for her to take the eight ball. And that's mainly, I think, because of, you know, Jeannie's a name that's been around Florida mm -hmm. for a while, and nine ball's definitely her strong suit out of the two games. I think she would tell you the same. Well, and Jeannie, these two have matched up earlier on today. Jeannie sent Julia to the one-loss side of the bracket, so they are matching up again for the second time. Nice opportunity for Julia to try to avenge that earlier loss. What better way to do it than with the uh, taking home the title? So we'll see. But an opportunity for her early on. Yeah. <clears throat> Jeannie obviously fired that uh, that break, and that cue ball went flying. Yeah, it's a uh, <coughs> ball in hand that you can't start a match any better than that. Maybe a nine on the break, I guess. Maybe that's about it. But you know, we talked about it in the last match. You know, Julia just coming off a match, what, 15 minutes ago maybe uh, tight match against Deanna Foster and Jeannie's been sitting a while mm -hmm. and uh, you know so comes in and excited to have an opportunity and really hammers that break but that cue ball goes flying so here we go Julia with ball in hand and initially it looked like she was going to entertain taking the solids I'm, I'm glad she made this decision here because the nine the three def definitely doesn't pass and the nine does so just from that alone, you can see the stripes are probably a little easier to deal with. Now this is a, where she wants to get at the 9 again. So it may be something like the 13, 14, then drop down for the 9. Now she would have liked to have gotten it first because if she gets a little straight on the 9, it may be hard to try and get position on another ball up the table. So she'll be a little elevated here, not much. Julia took two out of three games in her match against Deanna in the semifinals. See if she can start this match off with an early win. Get on the board first. 
again. This is a race to nine. So a little bit longer match. Grab your popcorn, whatever you like to drink, settle in. Yeah, I Should don't be know a great if that's going to bounce enough. I don't think she has the nine from there, Jason. And if she doesn't, it's really going to hurt her chances on clearing the table. It's close. I think she can get to the nine. I just don't know if she can make it. Maybe she can. She's looking at it like, all right, I'm shooting the nine, and I'm going to have the cue ball on that side of the table. So, Boy, the camera sure does fool you sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah, I think she may have to cheat the pocket just a little bit. She'd love to just go by the two ball enough to get a shot on the 15. I don't think she can really work the ball a whole lot. I think she has to kind of shoot this with a little bit lighter speed just to guarantee the make on the nine. Oh, yeah, she could get it. And she did really well with the cue ball, getting all the way up on the 12 or the 13, whichever that one is nearest the cue ball. That should be the ball she wants to shoot now. Julia from Port St. Lucie, Florida, on the east coast of Florida. Yeah, southeast, just, just a little above Fort, La Fort Lauderdale. Her husband, Jason, playing in the men's. I said it again, Jeremy. The open division. <laughs> which kicks off tomorrow morning, 10.30 East Coast time. Okay, she's all right. She's got the eight in the side. So talk about, you know, taking advantage of a tough out with ball in hand, but also probably, uh, you know, getting a little confidence here in the first rack. Absolutely. Because, you know, the ladies in the last match, it was just a difficult match. There were just some tough situations, so they really didn't get that flow going. Um that they want, you know, that, that kind of rhythm. Saw Deanna Foster outside after the match, disappointed obviously, but uh, I think when she reflects on her tournament here at Strokers this year, she will be very proud of what she was able to accomplish finishing in third place. No easy feat. No, tough particularly field. Particularly with this field. Really Good start there for yeah, Julia. Solid stroke. Uh, just Really good fundamentals. Big point on the board first. She yeah. will have the break. I made quick work of that too. Yes, she did. Took full advantage of that mm -hmm. of that uh, that cue ball off the table there. If you're just joining us, this is the final round of this year's Women's U.S. Amateur Championship. You see Jeannie Seaver preparing the rack, the eight ball rack. Julia Shearman preparing to break, leading by one game in this race to nine. They're going to play six games of eight ball before they switch to the nine ball set. I'll tell you, that's, you know, three games of eight ball in that short race to five, of course, is a, a huge portion of the match. You know, not as big as the nine ball, but can influence the match, but... You know, if somebody gets a little one-sided on this eight ball, even if they feel like they're a little underdog going into the nine ball, but they get a 4-2 or 5-1, you know, outcome of the eight ball part of the session, uh, mm -hmm. that could be huge mentally. All right, see if she takes a little off after Jeannie lost the, she, uh, she lost the cue ball as well. All right. Turn about fair play here. Mm -hmm. Jeannie will have ball in hand from the outset of this. We saw a ball fall there at the end, side pocket. Yeah. Dropped late. Really, there's issues on both. I kind of like the solids a little bit more. Um, I think the five goes in between the 11 and 13 in the corner. I I think I like shooting the two here, or the six here, and just kind of holding for the two on the opposite side. You can set up nice and straight, and maybe not so straight. Maybe the 12 is a little in the way to set up perfectly straight on the six, but you can certainly manage it. And, if you can clear the two, that opens up the three in the corner. Now, it looks like to me she may be entertaining a stripe. And the stripes to me, the 14, I just don't like the way that's looking. Now, she may try to get on it now. Jeannie's another hometown girl in this event, Tarpon Springs. Very uh -huh. close here in the Tampa area. She's been playing pool for 26 years. 
I was trying to guess her age earlier because you said her big sister got her started. You mentioned her sister. Well, that's what I said too, earlier right? that I thought she had a sister that played that I met way back in '99 or 2000 when I met Jeannie because the the Florida the Ladies Florida Tour I just had a few of those events. And Vanessa Siever. Yeah. Vanessa, I big she, sister. Yeah, I thought she had a sister that played. So Vanessa probably tuning in or maybe she's here watching live. She mentioned Vanessa and her bio here and how important of an influence she is. And she also mentioned one of the fellow competitors in this year's event, Sonia Shabib. Mm -hmm. said that's her biggest supporter. Sonia had a nice run here at this year's U.S. Amateur Championship as well. So Jeannie plays with all Mez equipment. They like the Mez equipment here in the Tampa area because yeah. I think Deanna said the same thing, played with all Mez stuff. So, And you'll see that in areas that, you know, they're – if it's a local person, maybe local yeah. cue maker, now they Mez, really support. That's a, that's a ja Japanese, Japanese brand, yeah, yeah. yeah Mez. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, even if it's a local or just a, a popular brand for the pool room or the area, you know. And Mez, uh, they do have a lot of tournaments in Florida. You never know; they may have been involved in some of those tournaments as sponsors, so that sometimes gets that support as well. All right, she's got to take on a decently tough five ball in the corner and, and really the angle doesn't do much for her so well, I Julia think playing with the Mez too I wonder if she has to go forward with the cue ball here because if she just kind of draws over a little bit unless she really pounds it to the side rail and over she really doesn't get much from it so you may see her try and hit this with topping let's try and go up for the one I think she's like a smooth medium speed. I think she's okay. She'll get on the left side of the one. Uh, she overcut it a little bit. Overcut it a little bit. Now this ball hanging is a tricky one, believe it or not. Just because of the 10 being there, she could easily not come away with a shot. Oh, Ooh. well, I don't think she got a rail either. So Jeannie will announce that foul. Yep. Presses that cue ball to the side rail, signaling to her opponent. It's ball in hand. And another opportunity here for yeah, uh, great opportunity. Julia early on. So again, I think it's still something like the six first, two in the side. Follow up a little bit for the three in the corner. Uh, then take care of that five ball. Then play the five and the eight last, I think. Something like that. She could shoot the five first. Yeah, that's fine. And then shoot the six, two, three, four. That's actually a better route. But the six really opens things up. So, oh, she still has the one down table as well. So I forgot about that. It certainly should be the six and the two in the side. Kind of what I thought Jeannie might take from the get with that ball in hand. Uh, it was behind the line, though. So you don't want much angle on this two at all. Like, you want to be really straight. Uh, kind of let up on her stroke a little bit. and The draw came off the ball. She's going to be a little upset about that. And that's easily from a long two days of playing. Hard to believe we just got started with this event yesterday. I feel like I know you've had a, a really long day. You've been <laughs> here calling the matches all day long. We appreciate that. Yeah. I know I the players the excited to have the, you calling their matches. <clears throat> yeah, and you're not done, right? You're going to go call another match over the Internet later on. Well, right? good. that's what I'm scheduled to do. You never know. <laughs> yeah, right. I might get me some of that Freddy Shrimp and say, I'm, well, I don't know if I can do call that. Call it a night, huh? Maybe. This thing goes hill hill. We may be here till the till tomorrow. Well, <laughs> good thing I come in late tomorrow. Yeah, you sleep in tomorrow. Rest the vocal cords. Yeah, that's weird. I'm, I'm usually okay on the commentary, but I teach a lot. And when I teach, I, you know, constantly giving the people some information. And I have not totally lost my voice, but yeah. it does start to go a little bit. <clears throat> I've been there, my man. All done right. that a few times. Yeah, she wants to draw her ball here and go ahead and try and get on the 11 and 15. No reason not to. Yeah, she settled for those, and hey, this is fine also. No, I mean, she'll just play the 10 combination, 10, 12, or 13, whichever it is. Come up for the 11, 15. Again, Jeannie had probably at least a two, 
maybe two and a half hour layoff yeah. in between. You know, she won the uh, hot seat match, advanced to the final, sat back, and was able to watch a couple of more matches. But she might have had a longer break than that, actually. I think yeah. I think she's she's been off for a while. So see if she gets back in stroke here. Yeah, that's a nice shot there. Good decision just to shoot the 10 and come up the left side of the table. Just don't flirt now. No reason to get too good on the 11 and get yourself snookered. Nice touch there. It's kind of up to her. Just stay away from getting elevated over the 4 or something like that. Just make sure you stay clean with the cue ball. And there you go. So Jeannie's going to get back to breaking the balls in game number 3. After she knocks this eight in and ties the score at one apiece. Pockets that eight in the side. Evens things up here at one game apiece. In the second of six racks of eight ball that we'll see. Jeannie will have another opportunity to break here. Julia will once again rack. If you're just tuning in, this is the final round of this year's Women's U.S. Amateur Championship. We are here at Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida. We had 47 ladies in this year's event. Down to the final two. Both of these ladies from the Sunshine State, as we mentioned, different sides of the state. Expect Jeannie to take a little off of this one. Just a little bit, though. She didn't take a lot off. But normally when you fly the ball off the table like that with that second ball, it makes you think twice about, you know, going 100% at it. I think she leaked a solid in, is that right? Yes. Okay, so she's got a tough and difficult three ball. Look at this. She's trying to just bump it open right here. She's still okay because she's got the six to work with. So if she shoots the five right now, is that the five that's near the eight? That's just stop your cue ball. Well, she needs to look a little bit. She's going to get that position now to go into the three off the six. The problem is you would have rather kept the two ball there just because now you got to guarantee a shot on the three going into the six. If you have the two there, you have a little more options. Now she could end up with a shot on the five, but this is touchy. Okay, she held it just enough. The 13 is really going to be a difficult one, though. She may have to entertain the cross side bank on the three right now. She needs to look at that and just say, well, am I going to get any better position on this three than right now? Because you can see both corner pockets are covered up. The 14 on one, or what is it, the 12 on one end, and is that the 10 ball that's down here on the other end, I think? You're the one with the 20-20. Well, the colors, I mean, kind of mess me up a little bit, but no 20-20 for you, is that what you're saying? Uh, a little no, long I gotta, on the bank. I got to peel contacts off my oh eyeballs my every night. I'm one of those guys. That's uh, well, it's unfortunate. My eyesight has long since gone downhill. All right, nice open table here for Julia. This is pretty basic eight ball here. You take care of this portion of the table, the 14, 9, and 13. Then you come up and, you know, whether you use the 12 to get on those other three balls or, or just take care of that other part of the table after. Generally how you do it in eight ball, you don't want to be moving the cue ball up and down the table. It's usually yeah. one end of the table you take care of and then <coughs> come down. And, and what that does is that results in a lot of short shots, Jason. You know, you're not you're just playing on, you know, was it four and a half by nine? So that'd be two and a quarter by four and a half instead of the entire table. A lot of folks thanking us for the live streaming here at the U.S. Amateur Championship. And want to make sure we acknowledge some of the folks behind the scenes that make that possible. Kara Nord, Murdoch Loftus. Of course, our tournament director. Oh, Kara Price. She got married during the pandemic. Sorry. Oh, congratulations. Sorry, Tyler. Kara Price. Of course, Bill Tufts. 
Greg Fletcher. Takes a lot of folks to make this work when you come into a place and you got to set all this gear up and run things through the ceilings and the lights and all that stuff. So well, we get to kind of the public side of it, but a lot of folks it takes behind the scenes to make it all work. So we really appreciate all their yeah, absolutely. hard work and dedication to bringing this great coverage to you guys. So well, glad you're enjoying it. I think it was my wife I was saying to last night that, you know, I go to, been to a lot of tournaments and mm -hmm. been on both ends of working them and playing them and you know, for what you are doing here, you can appreciate it just because, you know, you make sure you're not short on hands. Yeah. You know, that's what I see. There's a lot of APA here, guys that have made the trip to make sure all bases are covered. Well, this is the first one in so long, too. We wanted to make sure we got it right, you know, yeah, went well, over a year, first big championship. So we wanted to wanted yeah. to do it right, wanted to keep everybody safe, wanted to have a great event, and that's kind of the welcome back. And hopefully this is... Uh, Hoping this kind of sets the stage for lots of good things to come in 2021 in terms of pool tournaments. I know you feel the same way. Yeah. Nice shot. Good stroke. Did she get to the 15? If she didn't, this could be a little funny. Could be a little hairy. Some folks asking about where they're favorite player finished in the tournament i would encourage you to go to compusport.us check out the bracket you can see where everybody finished in this year's women's u.s amateur championship you can also go look at the men's bracket see who's matching up tomorrow we'll get started with the men's i did it again again i just want to say it so much don't i the yep. open division it won't take long You'll as far it. as i know it's all there's only men right okay kara's shaking her head i'm not sure she fully knows but She's giving me the answer that I want. She's going with it. <clears throat> Trying to justify my me stepping on my tongue here repeatedly. It happens. Meanwhile, Julia Shearman trying to grab another early lead. Nice shot. Now she's going to need a little bump maybe to slow the cue ball down. Otherwise, this could get tough. And you know, Jason, anytime you're on that rail with the cue ball, just just makes it. You know, 30% tougher no matter what the shot is, usually anyways. Yes, sir. And this is where she may have to go ahead and take on this shot on the 11. There's a few situations, and a good safety is a good safety no matter who you're playing, but she looks like she's going to shoot the 15 and roll her up on the 8. Now that would do it, but Jeannie's a little different player. You have to make sure you get the snooker here. She's not somebody that's uh, going to miss something easy normally. And I don't mean just a, a shot. I mean a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, a little light, a little light. I'm not saying it's horrible, but I think she may have left her the offensive play on the five. We'll see. It's real close. Maybe the eight's in the way. But Jeannie will play a, some type of smart shot most likely anyways if she can't go offensive. Make sure we thank our sponsors, Aramith Billiard Balls, Action Cues, our friends at Pool Dog. Valley Dynamo, great sponsors of APA. Yeah, she can take on a tough three ball up in the corner, but it's uh, really like, uh, you know, throwing caution to the wind there and, and, and really kind of a win or lose shot where she's in a position I think she maybe can play the cue ball up the table here for a somewhat of a safe maybe uh, she wanted to go over more with the cue ball she wanted to get over maybe another six or eight inches something like that comment here about Jeannie having moved to the opposite side of Florida so I'm, I was thinking she was kind of maybe from the east coast of Florida like down towards I don't know why I thought she was down towards the southern part of Who's the that east Jeannie? coast yeah did she relocate um, over here to the west coast I think she's always been from 
the 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 this west area? coast of florida yeah. maybe not you know tarpon springs okay. but i i'm almost 100 percent she's always been from the west side the yeah. west coast of florida i think she used to play in that seminal oh a lot of seminal yeah, thing yeah. they did the, the little tour stops they did in florida that was so yeah. popular back in the, the early 2000s mid 2000s i guess some great events down there at that Hard Rock. You ever been down there? Oh, the, yeah. The one in Hollywood, oh, yeah. Florida? Yeah, I lived in Jacksonville for a couple <coughs> years, and I played a few of the events. Man, I loved going to uh, loved going to those events at the Hard Rock. Great facility. Of course, there's a Hard Rock here in Tampa. Another, sure another is. beautiful facility. I haven't been there. Facility, yeah. yeah, we used to have the uh, – I only got to play in the finale one year because I played a lot of, you know, the pro events when mm -hmm. and they kind of convicted some uh, conflicted sometimes, so. But the Steve Miserac finale that the Seminoles put on for the Florida tour was just yeah. awesome. I'm told and for a little Florida tour, it was like 20000 at it. I mean, it was, you know, like really pretty good money. Oh. Right maybe, up at one ball. Yeah, maybe <coughs> that's that sitting for a few hours there. A long, tough shot. I'm told Jeannie is from Cocoa Beach. Brevard County, which is on the eastern side oh, of the state. A okay. little further north than I was thinking. Oh, okay. More central Florida, east coast central Florida. Not too far, I think, from like Cape Canaveral and some right, of that stuff right. over there on the east side. Melbourne, maybe. Not too far from Melbourne, maybe. Okay, nice shot. Cue ball's tracking a little funny, so... She may have to play underneath this eight ball, maybe for the opposite side pocket or something like that. Curious if any of our viewers, because again, I'm getting a lot of this information from the viewers. Curious if any of our viewers know whether these two have squared off outside of the U.S. Amateur Championship before. If their first meeting was earlier today, I'm curious if they've, you know, run yeah. across each other in some of the tournaments down here in Florida. I'd be curious to know. You would think so, huh? Well, that's always a small world in the pool community, oh, especially yeah. when you get within a state. But, you know, opposite sides of the state. I know Julia is fairly new to the game, last 10 years or so, so maybe not. But Well, Florida's a big state, but sure. it's not like Texas. Sure. There were some ladies here from Odessa and um, I think uh, where else uh, that was not too far that I didn't know. Uh, of course, Texas 900 miles across and 900 miles top say, to bottom yeah. is huge. That's a... If you ever drive across Texas, holy cow, you wouldn't believe it. It's the most depressing thing I've ever seen, too. <laughs> as soon as you enter on I-10 coming from Louisiana, you mm -hmm. know what the first one of the first mileage signs are? Hmm. It tells you how far it is to El Paso. Who oh, would, okay. would want to know that when yeah. you're 900 miles away? And it says it, like 857 miles to El Paso. That's not very, you know, nice, right? So I think it was not until I visited Amarillo that I realized how wide texas mm -hmm. is in terms of east to west i know it's deep from north to south as well well from my hometown of baytown which is far east side of the state i believe it's further from my hometown to el paso which is in the same state than it is from el paso to la i think anyways mm. a little bit further here's that side pocket shot to get a 2-1 lead nice right. shot and I'll tell you what, she is not afraid to shoot him into those sides. No. Nope. Put some speed on that ball. She is not lacking for confidence here mm -hmm. in her first U.S. Amateur Championship final. Julia Shearman takes a 2-1 lead over Jeannie Seaver in this race to nine. She will have the break, the fourth of six games of eight ball that we'll see before they switch to the nine ball set. Pretty tight match thus far, as we had kind of anticipated. And that's what you want in a final, right? Yeah, you don't, you don't sure. want a 9-2 kind of final. You want a 9-8 I mean, final, you right? Don't, you know, you don't. And you know, those, those landside finals don't come up very often, believe yeah. it or not. You just don't see, see it too, too often. Yeah. It has happened, of course, in big moments, but not too often. I was thinking back to the last women's USAM final in 2019, Tina Larson and uh, what was the, the woman from uh, Canada? Natalie. What's the last name? I can't hear you with the mask, but Natalie from Ontario. 
Was she the lady the that like, quit playing pool for a while and then started back playing? And she was really sharp. I just yeah. remember that was a hill hill match, and Tina had to win it on a pretty outstanding shot. So we've seen some some nail biters in the finals over the years, and hopefully we got another one brewing here. Ladies taking a look at the rack. Looks like they're satisfied with what they see. Natalie Jacobs. That's what you were yeah, saying. Natalie Jacobs. Jacobs. I think that's Thank the lady you, I'm Ro talking Reyes. about that said she had played when she was younger she and was then quit great. for a while. Yeah, she was great. Oh, well, she caught the head ball a little bit there, I think, tr not trying to. Just glanced off of it a little bit. In fact, I asked Tina who her toughest. You know, Tina's got three three of these titles. Mm. I said, who's the toughest you ever played in the USAM? said, Natalie Jacob, mm. the woman she played 2019. So that's some high praise. Well, she's taking on a tough stripe here because of the layout. The layout is just a little easier and more doable for the stripes. So I don't, I, I don't mind. A lot of times, you know, you kind of preach on eight ball. You don't want to start with a miss. You don't want to take too much of a chance on the first shot unless the layout says you have to. And that was certainly one of those situations. I'd like to get on the nine right now if I'm if I'm Julia. I'd like to shoot what is that, the thirteen that's hanging in the upper left hand corner pocket. And get underneath the nine if I could for the nine either in the side or the corner. Because she's gonna have to move the twelve to open up the fifteen. And I thought she may leave the 14 there to get on the 15. But now she's a little straight on the 12 to do what I was talking about. But you can see the 9's the real issue. Doesn't go by the 8. It has some upper pockets. But maybe she's going to open the balls up a little bit. She's going to shoot the 11 and then use the 10 to open the balls a, a bit. We'll see how that works out. There's two of them there, so the two and the three. So hard to get a lot of movement here. I don't know if she'll really come away with a shot on the nine or open it up. And she may not end up with much of a shot at all if she doesn't get the nine. And she opened it up decent. Now she's got the lower left-hand corner. Still a lot of work. She has to shoot the... The stripe that's kind of lonely just to pass the right side pocket there. Come out and hit that gap in between the 15 and 3 to get at that 12 in the upper left hand corner if you're watching your screen right now. And then still have to maneuver back for the 15 and the 9 so a lot of work here still. Brings Jeannie back to the table. I feel like we haven't quite seen Jeannie in rhythm yet. Haven't quite yeah. seen her settle in. And I'd like to see that here over the next few shots. like to see her piece together a few and kind of settle in. I just feel like we haven't quite seen that. And, and again, yeah. maybe a result of that, that layoff, that long layoff, not having little played bit, for a couple yeah, hours. Definitely the layoff, I think. But I don't think she's as comfortable playing eight ball. I mean, she definitely grew up playing nine ball and one heck of a nine ball player. That's going to work out really nice, opening up that little space for the, what is that, the five in the side here in, the, in a moment. Well, maybe we gave her the motivation she needed. Well, it's good to see her playing. A couple years ago when I was here, she said she was playing a little bit, but not that much. It's interesting how some players kind of fade away from the game for a while and then well, find their way back, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I don't know if that's a result of just lifestyle change or maybe frustration you kind of you know, plateau with where your game's at and you 
Yeah, and it's weird. You people, get a little frustrated, you know, and you. I find that people that you know have a have a serious hobby, they're very capable of finding another one they like. It seems like you know. Yeah, uh, they. You know, it's, it's just whether it be the com competition of something new or, um, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, it just seems you know, it's kind of like people that play sports. Period. They tend to play more than one sport, right? right? Until the body says no more. Now, she didn't leave much of a shot besides this combination. This combination, though, if she can make it, probably leads to a victory here in game number four. I would roll this, though. You want to roll it. You want to tie the pocket up if you miss. Or you just knock it in like it had <laughs> ice, like that. Okay, she held enough on the 9, and I think she's going to probably have to shoot the 9, just a little long on the 13. Julia looking to go up two games here in this race to nine. A little over halfway through the eight ball set. Yeah, d still difficult position. Uh, the 15 is tough. Not a hanger on the nine right here to start with. And then she's got to worry about the eight as well. I mean, at some time or another. Hmm. Gonna bring Jeannie back to the table once again. Yeah, and I think Jeannie looks at like the seven. I like the seven, shooting the four, then holding a little angle on the six to shoot it in and just bump the eight open a little. Real natural shot, nine ball shot kinda. Of course the winner of this event will move on to a pro event of their choice and 2022. It includes yeah, paid entry and awesome. airfare and lodging and all the things that go with that. And then, of course, they also get to return to defend their title. Yeah, that's sweet. And uh, you know, but I do think at the end of the day, if you ask most of them, it's it's all about getting their name on that uh, that trophy. That having their name on that trophy for absolutely for as long as that trophy's around, right? You know. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's one of those. I just saw what you were talking about that as far as Jeannie, just not quite in the flow yet. Just, yeah. Got herself going a bit. Still a long way to go, though. Time oh, to right the for ship. Sure. Just needs to. Well, nine ball. Definitely get that stroke flowing a little bit more than eight ball. I was going to look at that and see what Jeannie said about, uh, you know, we often ask them what they, which game they prefer. Let's see what Jeannie had to say. Nine ball, ten ball, eight ball, straight pool, one pocket. She plays them all. Yeah. But she did say nine ball is probably her better game, so kind of like what you said. Yeah, and she said she, I think you had commented she's been playing in a straight pool league lately. Or maybe Straight that. pool league here yeah. at Strokers. Yeah. Plays in some regional Florida events. Plays in APA Masters. I know Julie also mentioned that she plays league down in Port St. Lucie. That's probably a heck of a team with her and her husband. Yeah, right. That's a nice doubles pairing there. Jason and Julia. Watch out for them in doubles yeah, play. That's quite the Jack and Jill team. I hope Jason's nerves aren't shot to death over, uh, you know, you watching your partner play. Like, that's the most nerve-wracking yeah, thing. Yeah, especially when you've oh, got to be ready close. to play in a big event tomorrow. That's kind of a... Yeah. My wife, I watch her play, and nothing makes me nor more nervous. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty strong, really. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, the kids, even the kids don't make me as nervous as watching her play, it seems like. And nothing against her. It's just, you know, my wife. So. Yeah. You want what's best. You want her to succeed. Yeah. 
Okay, so pretty easy situation here for Jeannie. She, uh, she, the three goes in the opposite corner, so she may have to use the, the crutch here to because she needs to draw her ball maybe a touch off the six here. Not a lot, just a touch. I think the three goes in this opposite corner here, no problem. Now the one issue here is if she rolls the combination, you know, everything's probably okay, but it could get away from her and then really difficult to get position on the three. If she shoots the combination with that draw stroke like I was talking about, uh, she can hold for the three very easily, but what's the six going to do and where is it going to go? So there's a little bit of an issue both ways. I still like her shooting the draw to guarantee she gets on the three. Oh, she went ahead and opened them. And now she's, unless this really works out, she's going to have a tough position play. Unless the three goes by the 15, you know, maybe it squeaks by. It's real close. She's not really looking at it much, so she must be, you know, it's a great camera view. It looks, y'all tell me, y'all make the call. Does the three go by the 15 there? It's tight. Now I don't she, know that we're going to find out. Yeah. yeah, so you can put a little inside English here and come two rails and just bump the 15 just a little bit like this. Oh, she didn't get the bump, so she's in trouble. Ouch. Yeah. Well, even if she jumps it in, uh, the 8 doesn't pass the 15, so... Julia in a great position here to possibly get a 3-1 lead. Mm -hmm. Again, we talked about the fact that Jeannie, these two squared off a little earlier today, Jeannie getting the better of Julia in that match. So an opportunity here in the final for Julia to get some redemption. We'll see. Still a long way to go. This is a race to nine. Single elimination, so... The winner of this match will be your champion. And she's in a tough spot here. She wants to kick at this. And the one thing on the kick shot, of course, she wants to try and make it. But she doesn't want to leave a shot on the 15 to start. So she was trying to create some speed to where the cue ball didn't leave the 15. Because she could see that possibly if she doesn't leave a shot on the 15, it might be a little difficult for Julia to get out. But now that she's got the 15 first, Julia should be able to handle this. stretched here but shouldn't be a problem she can draw the ball or cheat the pocket with follow her eye off it a little bit, Jason. New life here in this rack for Jeannie. Yeah, and she can't do much here. She's just got to make it get over to that side of the table she's on now somehow to just take the shot on the eight. If she tries to draw this, I think she really makes it missable. So she'll just float this in with a hair of right English. Yeah, take the shots that she can. And that's another smart play. I mean, especially when, you know, she seems a little not in stroke yet, right? Well, that's a so, good chance to move her in that direction, pocket yeah. this eight. Watch out for the cue ball in the side pocket. Watch out for that side. Okay. There you go. Gene Huge picks game. up that game, and we are now knotted up at 2 2. 
four games into the six game set of eight ball. Jeannie will have the break. Well, I tell you what, for not have, you know, maybe not as being as in stroke as she'd like, Jeannie at 2 2. Oh, yeah. Able to overcome. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, for Maybe sure. Maybe uh, a little less comfort, but here she is, all well, tied at two in this uh, this final. Yeah, and I, you know, if she wins another game in the eight ball, I think you're going to see a breath of fresh air from Jeannie, knowing that, you know, if she splits the splits the six games of uh, eight ball, she's right where she she wants to be going into the nine ball. Yeah. And not to take anything away from Julia, I'm just talking about um, Jeannie's, uh, you know, mental frame of mind sure. right so okay it looks like she's staying on the side rail which tells me probably the second ball break again okay she's made a stripe she made something else up in the corner I think it's two Another stripes. Stripe, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what. I mean, a lot of times you make two of one, you could be in a little bit of a pickle, and the nine doesn't look too friendly, but she's got a little something here. I don't think she hits the four if she cuts. Maybe, maybe I'm losing it here, but I'm not so sure she really contacts the four if she cuts the 13. Eh, maybe she does, actually. I'll tell you, I, I kind of like it, actually, now that I look at it more and more. I kind of think maybe the 13 is the shot. Now, she's going to shoot the 10 and maybe try and get into the 9, or maybe come into the 11 and all that. I don't know. All right, looks like she's going to put some speed trying to tear the 9 away. I don't know. She didn't. Well, now she might have made it to where it goes, maybe. Maybe it goes by the 15 if she could get on it. It might go by the 6. That'd be amazing. But the thing is, uh, how you move the cue ball off the nine, Jason, with those other balls there, the cue ball movement is not is not going to be uh, friendly. Not easy. Wow, what a stroke. Fired that in there. Yeah. Watch out, eight ball, if she's cutting the 13. You could easily make the eight out of turn here. Not only straight in if you cut the 13, but maybe even off the 2. Seeing a little surge in viewership. So if you are just joining us, you're seeing live coverage of the Women's U.S. Amateur Championship from Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida. The finale of this two-day event started with 47 ladies down to the final two. Both hailing from the great state of Florida, the Sunshine State here, where we've been it's the last today. several days. It's shining in the pool hall, isn't it? Shining bright in the pool hall. Going to be shining the, really bright for one of these two at the, uh, yeah, the conclusion final, of this match. Final three players. Uh, All from the Sunshine yeah. State, yep. Doesn't want to get on top of that seven like that. I don't know if she can get at the five. She can't get at the six, I don't think. So now things have become difficult as far as trying to clear the table right now. We've seen as the matches have gone along, Julia, when she gets in a spot, does not try, mind trying to play safe. I would bring this one back up the table somewhere. This is going to be a game that takes a few innings with that 9-4-7 situation over there near the cue ball. So there's no reason to have a lonely one ball down here by itself just kind of hanging out. So I don't think I would try to make anything here. I would just try and bring the one down on that end of the table. That way it can be useful here in a moment some kind of way. She's making it definitely more accessible. Now Jeannie's got a not pocket a ball here. He's just, she's just maybe maybe try to get her behind the eight, something like that. Like come off the thirteen, kind of float the cue ball behind the eight. Maybe put the thirteen in front of the six, something like that. 
Got to be, got to be looking at a strategic tactical game here. Oh, don't make the eight. Oof. It's close to almost really in trouble. All eyes here and strokers on this final match. It's kind of gotten still in the room, it feels like. Yeah. You feel that? I mean, it's just very quiet, very yeah. calm. Definitely hear a pin drop, that's for sure. Felt like you could anyway. Yeah. I haven't I just started kind of feeling that I way. Know, yeah. I don't know if it's the closeness of this match or well, you can see all the heads are turned that way for the most part in the pool room. Yeah, so. you can kind of see folks are now sitting in the arena. Typically, we mm -hmm. wouldn't allow that to happen, but with COVID, it seems to make sense. We'd rather have yeah. them spread around the room as opposed to all sitting up on that rail trying to sneak a peek. So just one of the one of the many changes we've implemented this year for the U.S. Amateur Championship. Trying to keep everybody safe and healthy. Okay, she's running a lot of balls here, so she's kind of evening the playing field a little bit. I thought she had a big advantage uh, with having more balls on the table with that nine the way it is, but the more she runs, like I said, if you're not getting out, you're kind of evening the situation a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, And the thing is, I understand this also, though. You know, she's got a nine ball that's really covered up over there, so... Julia figures she can peel a few off and still have an advantage, which is true. Uh, just not quite as much advantage, in my opinion. Okay. All right, Jeannie has to probably play another safety here. She'd like to pocket the six here off the 13, get rid of another solid for her opponent like that. Smart shot. Now you can see she can't get at the five, so she's got to play off the seven. I'll tell you, the eight's a dangerous ball, too, over near the pocket, right? Got to be careful not to knock that yep. in out of turn. Looks like she's just going to clip the seven and put Jeannie up on the end rail. The thing is, she doesn't mind giving Jeannie a shot on the 11. That's not really an issue. She just didn't want to give her a shot where she can open the nine up. That's the thing. Actually, if, if, if she doesn't leave her a shot where she can open them up, she'd rather Jeannie make a few. Oh, she kind of opened it up herself. She kind of yeah. hit that a little much. So now Jeannie can see some big reward in pocketing a ball. The 13 goes, I think you almost have to shoot the 9 first, almost, just because, I mean, you don't have to. It just depends on how straight you are on the 11, I guess. Surprised that she went that route this well, early? You know, you're talking about Julia? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I liked her shot. She just didn't, th she just didn't realize they were going to move that much. Yeah. She caught a little much of the 7. If she just shaves it, she's fine, you know, so. All right, big shot. Uh, she caught it just a little thick to the hole. Well, now it looks like a genius move. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Still nothing easy here. It's really thin to the side on the four, and you can't move the cue ball a whole lot. The five doesn't pass the eight. A little thin on the seven. You'd like to shoot the four right now. That's what you want to do. You 
The good thing is, I think she may be able to come across and not leave a shot at all if she misses. Like, just come with straight high ball, come across the table, and use the five as a big blocker on those stripes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about with the cue ball, see? See how the five has just cut her off on everything, right? So now Jeannie probably a soft kick on the nine, something like that. I don't think she really has any other options. And she could do real well with that soft kick on the nine. She could kick the 11 as well. It's not horrible. Whichever one she feels like she's definitely not going to foul with. And she feels real good hitting at a light speed. Oh, that's a little heavy. Look at this, though. She may have cut her off on everything there, Jason. Does she have the five in the side? Mm. If she does, it's great. If not, Jeannie's in a big driver's seat here in game number five. Yeah, she's got to take on one tough shot in the corner. Huge shot for Julia. Little thick, maybe? Mm. Almost. Great effort, though. And I tell you, she's kind of bumped these balls into a funny position now. She's got a shot on the 12, but mm, the 11 9, what do you do? She's stretched first off. She's going to have to use the bridge. So, which we've already seen that. Cheney has no problem drawing the cue ball, so I'm assuming the same with the bridge is what I would assume. So she'll try to draw back for a little cut on the 9, maybe the 11-9 combo. Mm. Yeah, well, now she's got to make another decision. Does she want to take on this shot on the 11, which I think she does. She could just play safe, though, knock the 9 away and draw the cue ball underneath the 11 here. Now, to watch out for the 8. You don't want to put the 9 on top of the 8 too much. No, look at that. Yeah, that's great. Beautiful. She must have sensed your recommendation. Well, it's a little bit more of a 9-ball kind of shot, so you see that safety pretty quick. Yeah. And you just don't play many safeties like that on an 8-ball just because a lot of times they have options, so it's hard to get ball in hand in 8-ball. Now, I like her just kind of, not lightly, lightly, but mildly kicking at the five. And the reason why I say that, she doesn't really take a chance of making much, but distance is her best defense in this, this situation. So if she can kick and hit that five that's up in the top right corner, she at least can make, uh, make Jeannie earn it. So kicking at the seven or the five, I'm not sure which. All right, she may catch the four, though. Mm. No. Ball in hand to Jeannie. Yeah. And I think if she had to give herself a watermark, Jeannie, you know, considering the eight ball, she's probably saying, all right, let me let me get three games out of that six, and I'm probably sitting in a pretty good position. Yep. Chance for her to take her first lead of the match. Nicely done. Pockets that eight in the corner and takes a 3-2 lead as we move into the final game of the eight ball set. Jeannie's starting to settle in a little bit. Julia prepares the rack. Jeannie will have the break. I'm going to play this uh, 
this final game of the eight ball set. And then they may take a quick break. I, th I think the referee said take a break after the uh, six games of eight ball. The eight ball set, if they need one, <coughs> right? Um, before they uh, before they turn their attention to the nine ball set. So we'll see. Uh, Jeannie, I can't say for sure every time, but Julia's been pretty consistent taking a little break during every match. Nothing, you know, too long or yeah. anything. Just seems like, uh, I wish, you know, in my opinion, it's kind of like me yelling at the TV when the coach <laughs> ends the game with three timeouts or two timeouts. Uh, you do that too? Well, they're like there that. for a reason. Those timeouts are, so... I'm glad I'm not the only that. one that does that. Oh, yeah. My wife thought I had some serious issues, so. Well, the end of the game management has really gotten really bad in the NFL. My, for most coaches, anyways, it seems like. But it seems like it would do nothing but improve with all the technology and everything you can, you know, all the data. Right? You're not but a Texans fan, are you? Um, I, of course I oh, am, but I'm, I'm, losing it. I'm losing it more and more every day. Man. Bring back the Oilers. Please. Love you, Blue. Yeah. I read some disturbing stuff about Watson last night, though, so. Like he's brought up on charges or something. Oh, no. Yeah. And I was so tired, I don't know, I think it's Deshaun Watson that I was talking <laughs> and reading about, I think, anyways. All right, she looks like she broke dry. She yeah. hit him probably the best she's hit him yet. Great spread, just nothing fell. And, uh. You know, the balls are about equal, I guess, so she's really limited on the stripes option. Only really a tough 11 ball, so might as well go ahead and start with this duck on the 7. Now, she want to try and come off the 7 and come up for the 6 right now. I don't know if the 6 will pass once the 1 ball is gone, so we'll see. She came a long ways, and I'm not sure she has anything other than the five ball now. I think the six may have cut her off on the one. This is Julia Shearman at the table here. Trailing now by one game to Jeannie Seaver in the final of the Women's U.S. Amateur Championship. From Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida. Watch out, cue ball off the 11. Okay, she's all right there. Tough little table here, though, no matter stripes or solids. Nothing easy. And really, this might be a situation where, I mean, you know, just your instincts say, man, I want to make some balls, but this is laying difficult. You can really do a lot of damage just running three or four and not getting all the way out. You know, these this is the higher level of the tournament. Of course, they're in the finals, so. Nice shot. Nice shot there. As nice as it was, she still only came away. She has a nine ball she can make off the seven. I'd think twice about that. Now, I'm not saying I wouldn't shoot it, but the seven doesn't really play, I don't think. It may just cut the 13 here. Oh, she can cut the 10, excuse me. I like that a lot, especially if she can hit it with a nice high ball. She might come two rails and open up the 12 a little bit. Oh, it kind of skid on her a little bit. Make sure we thank the folks here at Strokers. Staff here taking great yeah, care of the players. And they've been awesome. So 
Yeah, the tent open up until uh, this evening. And the weather turned bad, but I know the the girls have been running around like crazy for food orders and getting them outside, working hard. So we appreciate all their hard work and making us feel at home here. Yeah, and I can see because I wouldn't say all, but I definitely recognize two or three that were here a couple yeah. of years ago. So you know that it's got to be a good place to work. Yeah, Just stick exactly. around, Jose. Exactly. Del Rio, the owner here. We'll see him when the open division starts tomorrow. See, I finally got that right. The mm -hmm. open division. Yeah, good job. It only took about a half dozen times. It's all about improving yourself. Yes. Always moving forward. Oh, a little Watch thin. Out. Ball in Ouch. hand. It's just what the doctor ordered for Julia, really, with this out here, this layout. Just past the 10 o'clock hour here on the East Coast. Oh, wow. It's you gotten had, late, hasn't it? You had to remind me yeah. of that. Yeah. Well, it's been a action-packed day here. And the party keeps going tomorrow. We kick off at 10.30 with the open division. Trying to see what her plan is here. Okay, so she's maybe going to shoot the four and try and bump the seven open if it's if it's needed. That's a good smart shot on the three there. I don't know if it's needed or not, but it looks like the seven's kind of glued to that nine ball. It looks like it anyways. Maybe not. Uh, it's close. I don't I don't know if that goes there, Jason. So, but she's got a nice angle on the four here. Just to knock it in and just barely, you ain't got to touch it much. Just a little bit. Oh. Not enough. Yeah, it's not going to. A little off, too. Uh, yeah, it got a rail, I think. I think it oh. got a rail, so. Oh, yeah, I think that's what she, I think Jeannie just indicated as much. At 14, though, it really is not a good one. Now, the 9, she can shoot the 9 and drop on the short side of the 14 pretty easily. Just kind of coast the cue ball between the 6 and the 2. That would be a huge shot to get this out here, just like that. Now, she's a little thin, but that's okay. Now, the one issue is the 12 doesn't pass the 11. I don't know if the 13 passes the 4. So she's got to get clean with the cue ball here to get on the 12 or the 11, I think. Nice shot. Watch out, five ball. Needs a little more. It got there. Just enough. Yeah, now she needs to really think about the 12 ball that's near the 4. That's going to be where the 13 is it, rather. It's near the 4. It's hard to tell with the orange and the pink sometimes. but and She's got to get it off the rail, and she needs a little angle going towards it. Uh, is she going to stay off the rail? I'm guessing the 13 might go by that ball. Either that or she's in a pickle. All right, if she's not elevating, that tells me it goes. That's got to go a little bit, though. She's gotten a little thinner than I think she probably wanted. So she's going to be a little stretched with the bridge. But Jeannie's really good with the bridge. I mean, you know, you use a lot, obviously. I feel like we've seen a lot of the bridge this uh, yeah. this match so far. Now in the sixth and final game of the eight ball set. And she caught a little thick, so here's that opportunity that Julia really needs to take advantage of. Yeah, and this is a big point, big game here. You know, Julia obviously picked the eight ball set. I'm sure she's hoping to at least yeah, split them, finish right? it. Yeah, split, but work to be done. It looks like she's taking the five in the side.
Yeah, she's still got some work here, though. The six and the two and the way the eight is. She doesn't want to have to shoot the two up long. She's got a little freedom there, though, because the 13 is such so bad for Jeannie, right? So she doesn't have to totally worry about a miss, but still doesn't want to. She wants to clear the table here. Okay, pretty decent. She's got a good shot on the six to follow down for the four. And then play the two last and the eight in the opposite side pocket. So good position here. Again, go ahead and be free with the stroke a little bit. You can't worry. You're not too, too worried about a miss. You could leave a bank on the 13, I guess, but should be okay. Got to get that stroke loosened up for the nine ball coming up anyways. Yeah. Up to 11 games in nine ball after this. Would expect the pace to pick up a little bit as we get into that nine ball set. Yeah, making balls on the break, get a little clearer, a little freer, uh, a little more room. Nice shot. She got enough, so. Can get at the four. I'm not sure what she's going to do here. She's just going to lag this ball towards the hole, not try to make it, I guess. She's going to give up that bank, maybe, that I was talking about on the cross corner. That's the one position that she does give up a bit of a shot to Jeannie. So we're going to see those one-pocket skills here, maybe. <laughs> a little cross corner for Jeannie Seaver. It looks like it lays real nice, too. Looks like she sees what you see. Yeah, just don't let up on it. Just go ahead and shoot it on in. Cue ball's going to move towards the eight. Just like that. Nailed it. Just like that. Nice Follows shot. it up with the eight ball in the corner pocket. Takes a 4-2 lead after the eight ball set. They'll pull a few balls off the table and get ready for the nine ball set. We'll see if the ladies are going to take a break here. Not sure. We'll stick around for just a moment and see if they uh, just keep playing on or if they're going to take a momentary timeout. Looks like Julie's going to go ahead and rack. Jeannie seems to be staying at the table. Of course, if I'm Jeannie, I probably want to keep playing on. Yeah, she's How does that work in the game, you know, taking a break? How does, you know, is that... There's different rules. I mean, some of them you, you can't take a break on your opponent's inning. Um, you know, some places uh, it's kind of weird. Two players, like in Japan, if I remember right, you couldn't both players take a break at the same time either. So if I took my time out, even if you wanted to take yours at that time, you still had to wait until I returned to take yours. So just different rules yeah. and different places for it. Now they're going to play on. Genie with the break. She hit him really Breaks nice dry. and square, but. Nice open table, though. Just nothing dropped. Looked like he, she was t maybe going to take this on, trying to spin it in. Use a lot of inside English, and what you actually do is you hit the rail first, and then the right English takes, and you kind of kick it in. 
looks like a cut shot, but it's actually a kick shot. She decided just to play the safety and pretty smart move. Nicely done. See how Jeannie wants to respond to that. Again, now leading four to two in this race to nine. I'll say she might jump at this. I was thinking because she's a little jacked up on the kick. Not too hard of a jump, you know, if you're if you're decent at the jumps. Jeannie's won three games in a row now. She's starting to feel feel it a little bit. Really impressed to see two rookies to this event in the final. I mean, yeah. it just doesn't happen very often. I'm not sure I can ever recall it happening that two rookies were in the final. Not like that this. I would no, know of. First you said the, 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 what was the kid from Wisconsin that won when he was a rookie? And then he got, did he get to the final against Blake or no? Or it was, final? Well, you're thinking of Abe Shade, Abe. who's from Peoria. Oh, yeah. And, uh, He's but up, no, they didn't meet. That area. They yeah. didn't meet in the final last year. It was uh, he may have made a decent run though. Still, oh yeah, yeah, I think he finished third, or, third fourth. or fourth. Yeah, he's a great player. Part of that young crop: Abe Shade, Blake mm. Baker, a couple of young young guys coming through the open division the last couple of years. Yeah, and, and Blake is actually from that area also. Yeah. Not, not maybe right in Peoria, but somewhere around there. I think the same as Jesse Bowman and those guys. Uh. My long lost cousin. <laughs> the whole family plays good. What happened to you, Jason? <laughs> Apparently it's a different Bowman clan. Right. We got all the marketing skills, less of the uh, pool playing go. ability. Boy, for years I got asked that. Are you related to Jesse Bowman? I said no. In fact, I don't. I've never met him. Never. You know, I know most of the. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people in the pool world over the last twenty years, but not somebody I've ever had the chance to actually meet. But yeah, he I understand he's a great player. Oh, great player. Yeah, and I like Jesse a lot. He he doesn't play much anymore. He's a, uh, if I remember correctly, it's maybe FedEx he works for or UPS maybe yeah. or something like that. A triple sharp guy, and uh, I really like Jesse a lot. I always have. Jeannie with that bridge again. Yeah, she's very comfortable with the yeah, bridge. Yeah, she's good with it. She wants that to slow down just a little. She wanted to take the cut shot on the two. She may bump the three here. We'll see. All right, she got by it. Watch outside pocket. Uh, Watch outside pocket. Oh, yeah. It'll be ball in hand to Julia here. Julia looking to reverse the trend here the last few games. Still a long way to go, but you never want to get, you know, more than a couple games out of hand. Yeah, it, it just gets tougher and tougher. Yeah, and, you know. Try to keep it close. I don't know if these two have played before the U.S. Amateurs, but. I never, nobody ever weighed in on that, yeah. as a matter of fact. I, I guess nobody, I don't think anybody gave us any input on that if these well, two have matched up. What I was getting at is Julia definitely knows who Jeannie is and her nine ball skills, so definitely doesn't want to fall behind like you were talking about. Now, is she playing a 3-8 combo here to open up the eight a little bit? I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, she was playing safety. I see. She was trying to knock the three into the back of the eight and keep her behind the six. Really doesn't like the position of the eight ball there. Long, tough shot on the four now. All right, cue ball is going to get near the nine, over the nine maybe. Left it really tough. Jacked up in the air.
and that was tough. Just a tough shot when you're over the ball and you're worried about a scratch in the corner if you make it. Julia back to the table here. This first rack of the nine ball set. Trailing by two games. Well, that four ball's giving them all kinds of trouble. Yeah. sure what Julia uh, what Jeannie's going to do here tough little situation she's going to bump it and try and put her behind the six wow what a great touch she made that look easy and that was not easy from way down the table and she got a nice snooker off of it really cut her off on the kick shots as well you can see she can't get to the top rail the six is in the way tough kick shot to the side rail You can hit it going to the side rail, but it's not easy. Oh, nice shot. Really nice hit. Cut it a little bit. Oh, that four is going away this time. <laughs> Done with that four. He's an ornery fella. Doesn't want to drop. Mm -hmm. Four finally drops in the corner pocket. Mm -hmm. Got a little straight here. She's going to have to work the cue ball a little bit because the six doesn't pass the nine and the eight. Could maybe play a six-eight combo if she didn't feel like she could, you know, get the cue ball over to the what is the, her right side of the table or left if you're looking at your screen. Nice shot. She dropped underneath it. She's going to get the side pocket, though. So, able to continue the run. And I wouldn't say a must game here in game number seven for Julia, but it'd be a big one for her, I tell you that. She doesn't want to drop down three games to Jeannie. It gets tough when you got to chase it like that, mm -hmm. especially in this event caliber of talent that's here well these ladies can break and run out so winter break you know gives you a little better chance when you're trailing try and make up a little ground nice shot she doesn't mind those small angles into the sides I've seen that all day I don't recall really her missing any of them either so Another one, she's really got to work the cue ball from not much angle at all. So this is where a little cue power comes in. Macy, 
Jeannie asked her possibly what she might be doing. Jeannie's pretty quiet at the table, though. And this is a, a spot. If she's cutting the eight, you may entertain getting a referee here. Uh, you could easily hit the nine first and make the eight. Yeah, I think that's what they're talking about now. And she's probably saying, are you shooting at this? And looks awfully tough from there. Very easy. Look at that guy walking in the door right there. That Blake? Yeah, that's Blake. The defending champ has entered the room. Taking in the finale of this women's division here. And here's our referee at the table. Yeah, I'm going to watch this. Looks like Brad Jones, one of our two referees here. If you hit it clean, uh, nothing goes wrong. If you if you foul and make the eight, and of course, it's easy to not be able to see it, but she may get a double kiss and scratch right behind the eight here. Oh. Look at that. Oh. All right, big shot here. This is to draw within one. First game of the nine ball set. A little bit of a funny bridge. She's tried two of them. She tried bridging off the rail, then getting the hand in there onto the felt, so. This is the type of shot that, when missed, it's usually overcut, but just because it appears like more of a cut than it really is. I expect her to make it, though. And yeah, nice shot. Nice. Ooh. All right. Pulls within one. Julia will have the break once again. Jeannie will prepare the rack. The seesaw battle continues. See if Julia can even things up here again in this match. Finals of the Women's U.S. Amateur Championship from Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida. Part of the greater Tampa area. From 47 ladies down to the final two. One of these two ladies will have their name forever etched on the U.S. Amateur Championship trophy. In fact, we just saw Blake Baker come in, and he was checking out the trophy there, looking for his name on it. I know a lot of the guys, once they've won this event, they always come in, try to snap a shot of the trophy with their name on it. Kind of a cool thing. Yeah, it looks like See we, for the first time. we have our timeout real quick from <clears throat> Should we take a timeout here? Yeah. As we take a timeout, we're going to... Take a quick break ourselves. We'll run a few videos here and we'll be back here in just a minute. Check, 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 check. Are we live? Can you hear us, Internet? Can you hear us, Internet folks? Hey, folks, Jason Bowman here with APA reporting live from Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida, where we have just wrapped up this year's U.S. Amateur Championship. I am joined by our newest champion, Blake Baker out of Las Vegas. Blake, you are the newest in a long line of U.S. Amateur Champions. How does it feel, brother? It feels amazing. I, um, I was just waiting for to get my first big win on the map, and this is definitely it, and uh, I feel great. I couldn't feel any better. Talk to me a little bit about that final match against Bobby, uh, how things played out. I mean, he, he decided he, he wanted to start in the nine ball set. I'm guessing you had seen his earlier match with Abe where he was very proficient in the nine ball set, uh, but you kind of took things over very quickly. How did that final match unfold for you? Well, I knew he was actually, I knew he was going to play nine ball the last three, four matches. He chose nine ball right off the ga gate, so I just had that mindset already. Just don't make any simple mistakes. You get, the, get a lead on him and get him rattled and have a, have a good way to the win. I know you recently relocated to Las Vegas to kind of further your pool career. Where do you go from here? Moscone. Moscone Cup, that's my goal in the next year or two. It's a great goal. Um, speaking of Moscone, we had Jeremy Jones here, the vice captain 
Um, whether you realize it or not, he's watching you on the stream. I mean, is that do you, do you consider that kind of a, a first step in terms of an audition process? Yeah, that's what I think it is. Uh, that, that inspired me a lot, knowing that he was watching and knowing that he's a co-captain for the U.S. US team. And, uh, I knew his eyes were on me, and if I impressed him, then I could probably do something in the future with him. The 2019 U.S. Women's Amateur Champion, Tina Larson. Tina, you just wrapped up your third U.S. Amateur Championship title. How are you feeling? I'm excited and elated. It took me 12 years to get it again, but I'm really happy. What does it mean to you to, to win this title for the third time? You were the first woman to ever accomplish that feat. How significant is it for you to, to win that third title? I can't even explain it. It is. I worked really hard this year to get it. All the women from all around the country, actually North America now, and competing all in two days. I had a really bad accident last year, and I, I worked really, really hard on my game to come here this year. And this was my number one goal for the year, was to win this tournament. So we had a lot of folks that were tuning in online during the live streaming of the matches. She said she said she kept the grandkids up late watching grandma play. You want to say anything to, to, to daughter and the kids back home? Oh, thank you, Christy. I love you. Thank you, guys. You guys mean the world to me. She was my number one cheer all day. All day. She's just tough. Mom, grind it. Get it, Mom. Go get it. First female 3P champion. Right, ladies are just about ready to resume here in the nine ball set. Julia Shearman with the break. Now trailing by just one game in this race to nine. Another dry break there. Yeah, and I think she left a cut shot on the one, I think. Should bring the cue ball naturally down for the two. She may have to apply a little bit of spin on the ball. Maybe a hair of right English, maybe not. It's got to go a little bit. Comes that bridge. Mm -hmm. I feel like about she every other shot she's she got needs that. She a holster for that. Yeah. Song. She needs a bridge sponsor. Yeah, right. All right. She's she'll a just perfect player. Okay. She tried to knock the two away and hold the cue ball behind the seven and eight. Got away from her a little bit, but not bad. She caught a double kiss. She was trying to knock that ball away a little bit and hold the cue ball in the end rail. So Jeannie will take this on all the way up in the corner. One of the prettiest shots in pool, I think, when you walk the ball all the way up like that. Just seeing it track the rail and go all the way down. Of course, I jinxed her, but... And I, I ain't gonna lie. There's, there's a, you know, from being a, a player that uh, I'm very familiar with the feeling of, of a fatigue stroke. And I've seen a few shots by both ladies uh, in the match that, you know, just a few, it's not a, a lot. Day, but yeah, yeah, just a, the indicator of that. Yeah, it's kind of that tendency of the way you hit the ball when you're a little tired. It hasn't been many though, so. Hats off to these ladies. Yeah, endurance you know. is part of it, though. Yeah, you know heck, that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's I'm not sorry. about who's best on the table, but who can run yeah. the marathon, right? Yeah. And these ladies know it. Uh, that's another thing that 
a lot of the two-day tournaments, no matter the size of them, you know that to win it, you're going to have to play a lot of pool. <laughs> In a short sure. amount of time. That's yep. right. Which, you know, to be honest with you, with the per people that run deep, it's a blessing usually. But then, you know, towards the end, one may, you know, fall off a little bit off their game, 10, 20 percent. You know, it just happens. Especially a big title, you know, just because, uh, you know, they're pressing, they're, they're really playing hard every shot, so. Where do you feel that the most? I mean, you feel that like in your legs, you feel that in your, uh, your back, your arms. I mean, I, I I think it's the entire body a little yeah. bit more, you know. So, the feet, you know, they feet, even when yeah. they hurt a little bit, uh, that never really bothered me. It does, in my opinion, that doesn't affect the stroke too much. Um, a little bit the brain. Yeah, <laughs> the mental side. More yeah, the than brain the gets in the way, and then you kind of second guess yourself and just you know. Don't don't deliver the, you know that execution we were talking about earlier. Huge part of you know everything you can do and and the talk about it all the time that you know execution will overcome a you know not just a little bit of a bad decision but sometimes a lot of a bad decision. So if you keep the execution part intact, you know you, you can get away with a little bit of a you know hairy decision you mm -hmm. might say or a sus suspect decision, but once that execution goes a little bit, now your mind's like, oh, man, am I going to be able to do what I want to do? All that kind of stuff. So it, you know, it really kind of involves both of them. Um, but now Jeannie, that was a nice stroke on the four. Ah, she's got a little off angle, so she's going to have to move forward to the top rail here. Great shot there. A little bit of distance. Talked about it all day. Jeannie really doesn't have an issue drawing the ball, but anytime you get a little distance now, accuracy is a premium. Yeah, she didn't think twice, huh, Jason? Nope. She's certainly feeling it now. She runs this rack out. Yeah, nice shot. And her trusty bridge. Mm -hmm. Nice All shot. All right. Well, if she wasn't in stroke before, I feel like she's there now. So she picked up the rhythm there, huh? Takes a two-game lead once again, 5-3 now in this race to nine. Of course, she will have the break once again. Yeah, and you got a room full of the players in the open event waiting waiting for this match just to get a little bit of time on the table yeah. before tomorrow morning get a feel for those tables yeah do, do we know what time they're opening here at strokers tomorrow i believe 8 a.m oh 8 a.m also for tomorrow okay even with the 10 30 round 10 30 round yeah okay I think, so I that's think a good that's good good time for the 10 30s plenty of time to get in i there could be totally goals. wrong about that just to be honest with you okay do you know that's right no that could be wrong I'm guessing by nine at the latest, right? Yeah, I would think nine. Get them in here sure. and get some breakfast. You know, they do serve a good breakfast here. They so. do. I think they even serve like ice cream here. You can pretty much eat anything: breakfast, lunch, dinner, I, dessert. I had to go to work at nine this morning, so I didn't get the breakfast. <laughs> so I had to wait a little while. I think all I've had the entire day was a half a little half a salad. There you go. That's a way to stick to the diet. Well, I didn't. I, half well, a salad, I wasn't, not even a full salad. I, I didn't have salad. time. I had to go back to work. <laughs> I wasn't trying to claim I was sticking to anything. Oh, I really. got you. And I'll prove it later. I was going to say, there's time to make up for all that. Yeah, there's always time. All right. Janie Seaver. I feel um, like we've seen a lot of dry breaks in this match. Yeah. So, so let's see if we can well, see a ball in the break here. Well, the in rail break doesn't lead towards making the corner ball near as much, and these ladies aren't using the template either. Yeah. So, and again, so you called it. What are we at? Five three? Is that right? Five three. Race to nine. 
Now she cut this in the side and just, you know, kind of just don't even worry about the cue ball. Just take a little chance here. No, it looks like she's going to play a safety. I don't know if she got there. I know Jeannie can see it. I don't know if she can make it or not, but I think she can see it. Plays a safety of her mm -hmm. own. Says anything you can do, I can do better. I don't know if she really said that, but it seemed appropriate. All right, tough kick shot again. Anytime you you know the ball's a little ways away from the rail. This one's doable, of course, but still not easy. It's kind of out in space a little bit, and it's a little off angle kick to the side rail between the eight and the three. One of these women will be crowned U.S. Amateur Championship at the conclusion of this match. Will be the first time for one of them. And I think we'll see both of them back, that's for sure. I know the champion will be back, but I think we'll see them both back. Fails to contact the one ball, gives ball in hand to Jeannie. Jeannie kind of surveying the four. That's the problem situation. Now the three's near, which is good. So she may be able to break it out, maybe play a safe off the four uh, somehow pretty easily. Maybe, maybe a kiss shot on the nine. You never know. But I think she may want to stay up, uh, draw up the side rail, leave a little angle to maybe go into the four nine here. Yeah, you know, like that. See how she stayed underneath the three, and it kind of the cue ball goes naturally towards the four nine now. Yeah, nice shot. Nice shot, Jeannie Seaver. There's our bridge coming. She'll just come one row out in the center of the table for the five in the side. She's got to do a little work from the six to the seven to the eight, but. She took care of the hard stuff with that three and the four nine there. And you said it, Jason. You can see she's starting to get a little yep. step going. Ah, she got on the wrong side there. That's going to, I mean, she's still okay. She'll just hold the cue ball. This is where you take it a little more time and realize it's not too tough. Don't try and do too much. Just hold the ball and take the cut shot on the seven. She's a little upset that, you know, she got out of line on a simple situation. That's that's something you usually don't want to do. But Oh, nice shot. Looks she like really she made up for yeah. it, all right? All right, so now this is a funny shot. Because if you end up short on the 8, hold up, hard to hold on the 9. If you go too long on the 8, you have to go around the table to get back on the 9, so... Anytime the eight's kind of out in the middle there, your speed coming down the table has to be pretty darn good. So she'll just come down this side rail here, try and just barely pass the side. It would be nice. Now see how she got a little thin now? So she's going to have to use a really nice touch. Probably float this in and come to maybe the middle diamond on the side rail and take the cut on the nine, something like that. Don't think she should try to move the ball all the way around the table. I just like her. Uh, it's not going to get there. She wanted the eight to get to the end rail. So I would say probably the biggest shot of her tournament life right now for Julia. Uh, she buries this. She cuts it to 5-4. We can see Jeannie kind of getting, starting to get going yeah. a little bit. 6-3 would be tougher for Julia. And any yeah. one of these ladies really in the in the event. Yeah, if I'm Julia, I want to try slowing her down at this point because yeah. she's definitely heating up. Well, I'll tell you, you bury this one. It's going to hit the pocket, the back of the pocket nice, come around for shape, and never know. Yeah, 
Yeah, nice shot. I don't think she's going to carry the cue ball as far as she wanted, but. Great shot, but no reward. Mm -hmm. See how she wants to play this. And she's not been afraid to play safe, you know, on the eight ball and the nine ball, but I think here she needs to bank at it. I mean, you know, you don't plan on fluking it in if you miss, but you may leave it tough if you miss. So, yeah, I like her banking at the corner she's standing at right now. Sit funny, not too funny. Missable, but not too funny. So Jeannie, pretty smart player. I don't think she jams this in. I think I don't think she did slow rolls, of course, but just like a medium top English, maybe. No reason to go crazy on it. Pockets that nine ball, inching ever closer. Now with a three game lead. In this race to nine, things are looking good at this point for Jeannie Seaver, but not too late for Julia. Still time to turn this thing around. Oh, but absolutely. As yeah. you said earlier, each each game you get a little further apart. It, it you know, you do kind of hit a point of no return at some point. So. Well, yeah, and you know, uh, you probably need a little help from Jeannie once you start to, you know, three games down, you might need a mistake, a, a big mistake from Jeannie to yeah. get back in the match. You Especially know, if she has the break here once again. And yeah. What a great view of the room there. Uh, it really shows the setting. Uh, of course, all the there's no really many spectators in the arena there, but plenty up on the rail. Going to have what I think is a packed room as soon as this match is over. <laughs> <laughs> Safely packed. That's We're going right. to safely pack it. Keep the appropriate distance. And again, we got a, looks like a dry break. Yeah. Why have we had, I mean, have we had a break where that wasn't dry? Well, the, nine, be, yeah, there was the nine ball, I don't recall a ball going down yeah. on the break. And the eight ball, they made a few. Yeah. But I think the nine ball has been all dry breaks. Pockets at one in the corner. Jeremy's over here telling me secrets. <laughs> Got secrets. <laughs> you know, she's been grinding all day, all day yesterday. She's just that type of player, Julia. She really puts in a lot of effort, not only when she's down on the ball, but beforehand, though. You know, she's not going to give up. That's not what I'm getting at. But yeah. at, at some time, do you just relax and just, you know, free swing a little bit, you know? Maybe if the deficit gets a little big. Figure you're kind of... Well, not saying you're you done, thought, but I mean, but yeah, change yeah, it yeah, up. Gotcha, I mean, yeah. I mean, just change the approach a little bit, you know. And I'm not saying what she's done hasn't been great. She's gotten her to the finals, but you know, nothing wrong with changing it up if you're trying to win, right? Yeah. So well, you know, there's no denying she took th she took two of the first three games in the eight ball set, and it's been all genie since then for mm -hmm. the most part. So needs to turn something around. Nice shot. Very nice. Nice shot. And that's what I mean. Like, she, I saw her play some safeties at times and stuff. And maybe just go, you know, don't just get down and hit the ball. That's not what I mean. But uh, a little like more loosen, offense. Exactly. Yeah. Loosen up, fire at her a little bit, maybe. Start swinging for the fences yeah. every now and then. Yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you. A little bit. A little baseball analogy. I know you like that. Yeah, for sure. Look yeah. for a pitch to drive. That's right. Now 
in a good spot, really. Uh, and to be honest with you, nice. um, I'd commented that, you know, Jeannie's not like some of these other ladies and not taking anything away from the other ladies. She's just a little more advanced than some of them. Mm -hmm. um, so it may be that type of player that needs to take it away from Jeannie a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Mentioned a lot of the players in the open division arriving here, anxiously waiting to yeah. get on a table here after this match concludes. Kick off the the open division tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Oh, nice shot, nice shot. Making the 8-9 just a little easier. Now she's got to work still from the 7, 6 to the 7. She could just roll it in and take the shot, but I kind of feel like she might try to move the cue ball here, and I don't blame her. You can cheat the pocket on the side side a little bit to create a little more easy cue ball movement. So she's going to survey what, what if I roll it in, what's that look like? Now she's looking to move the cue ball. So that'd be like a little bit below center with a little right English trying to speed up the cue ball with the right. And like I said, cut the six a little bit towards uh, our right side of the pocket if you're looking at the screen. Trying to just create a little bit more natural cue ball movement. Watch outside. Uh -oh. oh no, that's just awful. She made a beautiful run to there. And I don't fault. I mean, of course she scratched, but I still don't blame her for trying to move the cue ball there. I would have done yep. the same thing. Well, big window of opportunity again here for Jeannie to. Yeah. Really open up this lead now. And Jeannie, she don't have to overthink it. Of course, you'd like to take the nine in the short pocket, but Jeannie's well accomplished. Is she moving the nine here? Is she opening the nine up here? Now, this could get funnier. Does. That's what I say. I don't... Surprised you, huh? Yeah, I would have just played position for the eight and shot the nine all the way up. It was a good inch and a half, two inches off the rail. Now it's much more difficult. So Pulls that surprised me a little bit. Pulls that bridge back out. Now she wants to make sure the cue ball doesn't rest on the rail also. Okay, that's pretty good. Like when the cue ball's froze and the object ball's froze, good luck. <laughs> well, she's comfortable with that bridge too, isn't it? I mean, she oh, pops yeah. that thing out like it's, you can tell she's... She's taking dead aim here. She knows how important that nine ball is. There you go. Jeannie Seaver now leading 7-3 in this race to nine. Two games away from her first U.S. Amateur Championship title. One Julia one, Shearman maybe. looking yeah. to uh, <coughs> slow her down. Running out of time, though. Getting dangerously close here. Jeannie one game away from the hill. Well, you know, stay offensive. I like the way Julia looked through those first six balls. Unfortunate on the yeah. scratch there. Yeah, kind of the point where you start wondering... You know, frustration, is it setting in? Is mm -hmm. it, you know, it's been a long day. She had to claw back through the the one-loss bracket a little bit. You know, she didn't go to the one-loss side until late in the event, but picked up an extra match here or there. For sure. To get back to this final match. So we'll see if she can dig deep and find another gear. There's a ball on the break. Yeah, the corner ball went straight Finally. in there. And she's going to get rewarded with a nice, nice shot, shot on, on the one, one. And the two hanging. Yeah. The four below the nine. So she's, or is that the five below the nine? That's the five below the nine. Excuse me, the four's over the side. So if the five goes, I look for Jeannie to run out here to put herself on the hill. Be our first break and run of the match. Yeah, she, everything doesn't totally connect, but it's very doable, that's for sure. Well, let's see if she can execute. She'll come across the table for the three in the side, I think, anyways. Then if she gets full on that, the four leads to the five easily. That needs to go a little bit. Oh, she's perfect. Now just make sure you're on the right side of the four, and I think she's home free.
Could have used another six or eight inches out of that, but that's still fine. Uh, a little thick. That's going to be a little upsetting to her. A little thick. Might see the jump cue here. It's all Amy, or Amy, excuse me, I'm thinking about my wife. <laughs> Julia. Yeah, Julia. I saw Julia use the jump cue once uh, earlier. It was a super tough jump. I don't know if you remember when the ball was so far away and yeah, it was coming. She how went difficult. Right the, yeah, yeah she was, went to the nine ball. That was super difficult, yeah. yeah. She's got a couple different kick shots she has. She can use a three railer is pretty makeable. She can kick cross corner um, just below the nine. That's probably the shot you'll use most often in this situation. So. high maybe caught the nine yeah it was tough that wasn't easy ball in hand to Jeannie yeah so Jeannie getting in stroke and on Julia's behalf that you know she misses a ball been a little bit since she's missed and she gives her you know just doesn't leave her much so it's just part of the game but sometimes it you know just goes against you a little bit hey and I'm Really praising Julia also. She's played a great tournament, and she's certainly Absolutely. not out of it. So, Well, the hard thing about these events is there can only be one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, have, we play one. a sport where one is very, very recognized, and the yeah. rest aren't as, as recognized. The so. way it goes. That's right. Individual competition. Pocket set eight in the corner. Sets up nicely on the nine ball. Follows it up into the same corner. And Jeannie yeah. Seaver is now on the hill, folks. One game away from securing her first U.S. Amateur Championship title. Julia on the ropes a bit. Has to, going to need some luck from here. Jeannie yeah, with she's the break. Some luck and a little help from Jeannie probably. And, and never pro say never, though. No, you saw a match absolutely. earlier today. Yeah. Down 4-1. Yep. I've lost a few up eight to three, and I've won a few up eight <laughs> to three, so, uh, down eight to three. Excuse me. So, Jeannie wish I could forget those ones I lost. Now the hard part is Jeannie's <laughs> starting to look her best, right? We've seen yeah. the last few games. She looks better than she did early in the match. She looks well. She's a confident nine ball player. Yeah. I think she's not as confident in the eight ball. Plus, it was the beginning of the match after sitting down for two and a half hours layoff. or so. Let's see. Well. Back to the dry breaks, though. Yeah. So, again, Julia's definitely not giving up. We'll see her survey what is not the greatest of situations. It's not horrible, but, I mean, she could go for a kiss shot on the five, maybe just knock the one away and play safe. She's got a few options. Looks like she's going to try and knock the one away. Now, maybe not. Maybe she's playing the kiss shot. Okay. Watch out for the nine all the way down in the corner. I, maybe Jeannie doesn't see this shot, but there's a playable kiss shot really shooting hard on the one and trying to kiss the nine all the way down the, the rail. Great yeah. shot. But you see how the nine was coming yep. down, right? Yeah.
Oh, she's feeling nice right now. You see her slow roll that ball in? Look at wow. that. She's feeling it. That's right. Gonna be tough to stop. Yeah, and I like I like watching it. I hope she continues feeling yeah, it through the rest of the rack. Ooh. I mean, she'll be a fine champion for y'all's APA uh, U.S. Amateurs for sure. She really come on strong in this match. Can she hold the ball enough here to stay on this side of the four? She's just going to move it over anyways, but maybe difficult. Now she's okay. I think she can draw now for the five. Put a le little left spin to reroute the cue ball. Wow. Yeah. So You're going to finish it. You might as well finish it strong, and that's yeah. what she looks like she's doing here. She's going to draw the cue ball back for the six. Kind of slow draw the ball. Make sure it takes a little bit. Yeah, nice shot. Player well, position play here now is oh, yeah. well, very good. You know, she was a straight shooter at a young age when I knew her, and you know, she just got better and better learning the game. And I'm glad to see she's back playing some pool. That's for sure. It's fun to watch. A little tricky here. She's got to make a decision. Do I put a little inside? Do I put a little outside? I don't know if she can afford just straight high. All right, she put checked it up with just a little inside. In a great spot now. and Really kind of showing off her skills here in the la latter part of this match. Great shot. Here we go, folks. Jeannie Seaver on the nine ball. This would... Secure the title. And there you go. There it is. Jeannie Seaver, Tarpon Springs, Florida. She is your 2020-2021 U.S. Amateur Champion. Congratulations to Jeannie. 9-3 win over Julia Shearman. Great job by Julia as well, making it all the way to the runner-up position this year's U.S. Amateur Championship, a fantastic tournament for both of these ladies in their first ever performance here yeah. at the U.S. Amateur Championship. So congratulations to them. And again, Jeannie Seaver, she is your 2020-2021 U.S. Amateur Champion. Congratulations to the ladies. Congratulations to all the ladies that made it here to Strokers in Palm Harbor, Florida. been a great day, yeah, a couple of days here. and uh, Very impressed. We're excited to kick off the men's, uh, the open division tomorrow here <laughs> at Strokers, bright and early, 10.30, uh, be our first round. So I think we're heading out of here. we got to get some rest so we can turn around and do it all again tomorrow. So again, folks, we appreciate you tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed the matches, and we will see you again tomorrow right here, 10.30 Eastern, on the APA Facebook page. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Jason. Thanks to the fans, and uh, stay tuned, y'all. We'll see you tomorrow.